Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, Becoming a Digital Attacker. Thank you for taking out, uh, taking time out and being here today. My name is Milan Stamenkovic, and I'm the general manager of Mambu. I've spent more than a decade working with financial services institutions with a focus on digital banking propositions. Today, we'll be looking at how traditional banks can embrace disruption and compete in a fast changing landscape. So first, I would like to ask myself a question, you know, why is there a shift to this new reality? So we have the opportunity to do to financial services what, for example, Tesla has done to the car industry. You know, while Volkswagen and other car manufacturers are falling behind and have to play catch up, Tesla designed their electric vehicles from the ground up. Tesla also produced the first car that could improve with an over-the-air update so your car always stays up to date and always relevant. They also have a supercharger network which provides 24-7 support so that your car never stops. And because it's built for the new reality, it has a range and efficiency like no other electric car in the market. So we see a very similar trend in the financial services where banks can build their business models from scratch. These new business models are typically powered by cloud-based solutions that also run 24 seven and have zero downtime models. And above all, they run their operations with a leaner and much more efficient teams. So we could say actually that we'll live in the FinTech era where the future of banking is fundamentally unknown and is also an era which is characterized by rapid change, new entrants, new technology players that are coming to the market, and also pressure of transformation on existing service providers that we see all over the world. So it's an era where the banking services and experiences are being pressured to change from multiple angles. First and foremost, it's a customer-driven pressure, uh, demanding personalized services, which are very similar to the ones provided by tech companies like Google and Apple, for example. Customers have less time and less desire to deal with outdated banking products. They also have less patience. So you could say that the bar has been raised by all their interactions with other technology. And at the same time, new technology is also available for anyone who wants to build you know, a new bank or a new digital challenger in the market today. So there are better digital challenge, uh, channels with more rich ability to interact. There is more data, more ability to scale easier and cheaper, and ability to personalize your service. There are also you know, regulatory changes, which are encouraging competition, openness, and new entrants in the market. And also there is a, you know, a approach and, and there is cheap access to capitals funding innovation funding financial products, which makes these new entrants being capable of you know, thinking of returns not only in, in quarters, but in decades, if you will. And this means we are seeing two different trends happening now at once. On the one hand side, there is the rise of new entrants. And there are names like N26, for example, that is one of the biggest and most popular digital banking operations and digital banks across Europe and the US. But also there are other entrants like Ant Financials or even Apple, if you will, coming to the financial services space. And at the same time, there is also change by the established and tier one banks that are uh, out there. So just to name a few examples, you can see banks like AB and Umbro, which is one of the largest banks in the Netherlands, launching a speedboat initiative to compete in a space which was untapped, for instance, for SME markets. You can also see, you know, examples like uh, driven by Goldman Sachs or Santander that are launching these new digital challenges, which are becoming more and more competitive as they grow. And if the future of banking is fundamentally unknown, it's actually a moving target, which will change and as new technologies come up, as new competitors enter the market, and also as the number of ways you can combine these to meet a market that's expecting better experiences and more personalization. So this freedom of change and the freedom of choice 
becomes critical to success of a, of a new digital challenger that is out. So if you look at some of those names that I mentioned earlier and new entries that are coming up in the markets, there is a common denominator for all these new initiatives. They operate more like a tech company rather than a bank. And why is this so important? Well, this brings a competitive advantage for tech companies as their IT organizations are you know, organized around a set of platforms run by accountable platform or product teams. These platforms are each managed individually and they can be swapped in and out. And when composed, they form the backbone of a company's technology capability. So this is why tech companies can get products to market 100 times faster than, you know, compared to their more incumbent peers that are out there. So if we go about building a bat, how, how, you know, what are the approaches? What are the examples of building a bat that are available? We can see in the market that you know, some of the players are trying to build their capabilities in-house. And while this might sound very attractive, it also takes uh, you know, a huge amount of time to come up with only with a first proposition. So this is typically not that great for your you know, time to market that is critical in today's market. There are also monolithic solutions that still dominate our industry. And usually those are end-to-end -end solutions for certain verticals that neither support you in building your distribution networks or providing your omni-channel experience. And also, if you look at other approaches, you know, there were software vendors that have been promising modularity for years. What they really mean is a predefined suite of proprietary modules that extend the functionality of their core systems. They are extensible, but they're not flexible or open. A metaphor for this would be a jigsaw puzzle piece that you know you can build the full picture with, but you can't actually piece uh, from, from the other sets and you can't take the piece from the other set. And when you look at the modern banking technology and modern banking architectures that are being built right now, we see a lot of approaches that are similar to composable banking approach. What does this actually mean? So there are composable systems that are on the other hand, self-contained and designed for interoperability using API first approach. So you can think of Lego blocks, for example. You can use them to build and empower any business model that you envision for your digital tech. Okay, so let's build a bank from scratch. How do you do that? Well, first and foremost, you think about customer experience and the value proposition. And following the agile methodology, you start defining you know, just enough features or your minimum viable product, if you will, to satisfy early customers and to provide feedback for future extensions. And this could be as simple as you know, defining your full digital onboarding, your basic card account or wallet account, your debit card, payment feature, list of transactions, and uh, that's pretty much it. And when you grow from here, we are free to go in any direction. We can swap out any of the components if they grow stale or if we see a fit. And each component in this story of building a digital attacker is an API driven and allows us to avoid silent landscape and truly evolve over time as this market shifts and business sees opportunities worth acting on. So you could say we are now fully transformed, a digital banking brand ready to be launched. So if you look from a technical perspective, I would like to emphasize an example how the architecture of such a digital challenge could potentially look like. So there are you know, key upstream functionalities that are typically there to provide you know, with your credit decision existence, your KYC, AML, and whatnot. And these would typically be exposed to your customer experience layer, which your customers actually care about most. You also have the downstream systems that are there to provide you with you know, your payment rails, your card processing, accounting systems, and whatnot. Typically something that your customers don't really see in their day-to-day -day banking operations. And then at the, core, at the core of that, obviously, we have a modern core banking engine that actually uh, makes this a reality. So in essence, what this setup promises is the reality of agile and uh, 
true digital process of building and putting your bank together. So for the CEOs and CTOs of this world, agility brings these three main promises when you put it like this. One, speed to market. So every single day you spend waiting, waiting to launch is a day spent by competitors slowly but surely shifting your customer's base towards them. So the barriers to entry are uh, low now, but the barriers to switching are even, uh, even more low. Two, I'd say it's speed in the market. So once you launch, you will have to be able to release new products, new services, and new features. It's a matter of days and weeks rather than months today to bring new innovations to the market. Innovation delayed is, in this case, innovation tonight. And lastly, it's flexibility in choice. So the solution landscape is evolving fast. Therefore, delivering the best service means the flexibility to use new services as the business needs arise. And maybe to give it just an example of some of the success stories that are out there build on a similar approach. So we'd like to mention a, a bank that was launched in the UAE in Abu Dhabi, which is the first category one digital license bank in, in the UAE. And this is a true example of composable banking. By being able to select the best of read components, which they can swap in and out as they see forward, as they move forward, AGTB actually became the world's first fully digital trade finance bank. And if you look at more of a retail example of this story, obviously there is N26. By being the first uh, and the largest digital bank in Europe uh, and now moving to the US, N26 has actually given a uh, extremely good example of how building a composable banking approach allows you to build a digital challenger that is able to go after the global market. And last but not least, I would like also to mention an example of Zest Money, which is a consumer-centric digital lender in, in India. It's built as a platform that can meaningfully improve the lives of more than 300 million households in the country who currently have no access to credit cards or any other form of financing option because of insufficient credit history. Well, by putting this together as a digital proposition, Zest Money actually addresses the gap by giving out small loans, which can grow as the consumer uh, repays success. So we could acknowledge that, you know, predicting the future is definitely not possible, but being able to change is something that helps digital challenges go forward. So with that, I would like to close and say that, you know, we're Mambu and we sit at the heart of more than 200 digital attackers globally. I would like to thank you for this opportunity to uh, speak and also happy to address some of your questions.